I've been doing a huge amount of thinking. You know, I'm not made for this. 19 years later, here I am now. I guess uh, despite my best efforts, some of his advice sunk in. I have to use my savings, which was actually my mortgage money. 150,000 in the last eight months of my money. I wanted to do something which doesn't just benefit me, it benefits others. It doesn't matter how much I try to make this real, it, there's, it always, it's never totally real. Yeah, don't worry Tom, just keep going, you'll be fine. I'm like, sod off. You know, why you don't collaborate with others and stuff? I don't because I just choose not to. People who are nice to your face, lower chocolate to your face, uh, as soon as you turn your back, they just, you know, stab you. And as a result of that, I'm just very untrusting. They do their thing and I do my thing but I just want to keep it at bay. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for tuning back in. If you like the content, do make sure to give it a little like and subscribe so you're always up to date with videos when we release them. Now, in last Monday's video, you saw us. Uh, we were starting a house rewire. That is going to be coming up in today's video. We are finishing the first fix. But before I get into that, our bucket truck. Now, actually that reminds me, we've got the Anderson connectors. Do you remember I was talking about the connectors for charging the van up because we had a charging issue with this. In fact, we've got charging issues with most of them. They have arrived now. So that is gonna be coming up in this Friday's video. That is gonna be uh, this Friday's video fitting the Anderson charging connectors to these vans. Uh, but I would love a bit of advice from you guys. Some of you must be watching who do night work, uh, street works, that sort of stuff. And I'm trying to figure out a way around this. Now, when you're working up high and it's dark, I mean, you're working overnight at like 12, one, two o'clock in the morning. I've got to find a way to illuminate the bucket from, in fact, it might be easier. If you go up there, you'll see, do you know what I mean? If you go up there on the staircase, literally telling the cameraman what to do. I am actually heading out to the job, but I just, while I was here and the cameraman was here, I wanted to talk about this. This is actually a studio um, lighting, extendable telescopic pole thingy doobie. But when you're working at night, what I'm trying to figure out, I've got to find a way of illuminating this bucket. It's, it's almost like, this is a really rough idea, but if I was to remove these legs and just had this pole, which is telescopic, right? What I was wondering is what if I was to bolt this? Because I can buy that you can buy the U-bolt clamps for this. What if I was to clamp this onto the back of the bucket, right? You see where I'm going with this? I've got a 110 socket here, which is in the in, it's the other end of that is down in the side loading door. Now I could turn that into a 24 volt socket just because it's 110. Doesn't mean I have to keep it at 110, but do you see where I'm going with this? Why can't I do something like this? You just put, have the pole on the back here. I'll do a smart job, obviously, but have the pole on the back, but have a big 100 watt floodlight up there or something. But I can't, how do other road contractors get around this when you're up in the air working overnight? I don't know. The problem is I've never seen anyone do it because I've never been on the road that time of night watching them. But leave your comments below. If you know how the other road guys get around this problem, then you must be able to light the bucket up when you're working overnight. There must be a, a common issue. Put it below because that's the only way I can think of doing it. Take these legs off, bolt this neatly onto the back of the truck, do a smart job. You know, when you're finished with it, you just drop it down and that's it, onto your next job. But put it below if you know, because I actually, I don't know the answer to this. So Jay and James, they've already headed out to that job which you saw us doing that house ride. They're heading back over there to finish up. So I'm gonna get into the other van now and go and join them. I'll see you over there. Okay, everybody, we've just arrived. We're back here at this house. We're rewiring. Uh, chases, those are pretty much all done now. Capping is going in now. Today, the main plan of attack is gonna be running in the data cables for these drops here. So we've got RJ45 jacks going in. So we've got to run the data cables down those. That's going to be today's job later on this afternoon. That's the end result, actually. If you put the chaser on 40 mil, that's how much gap you get. So you've still got, there's plenty of plaster depth. You know, there's quite a lot. To be honest, it's actually too deep. You could do 20 mil, it'd still be more than enough. But it looks quite nice, good end result. So kitchen, that's pretty much done now. We're just waiting for the tops and everything to go in. Boxes, again, we've had to use uh, foam on some of these boxes. Um, but they're fine. Splashbacks, that'll all go in. This switch here, we've got, we've ended up just using all-round bands because trying to cut out these chases here was just, e this was all falling away, so it was easier to cut a big chase out, put some all-round band there, and then they can dot and dab, because they're putting dot and dab straight over this, so that's why we've done it that way. And then up here, everything is still in process at the moment, so James is in the next room cutting the down lights out, socket runs are done with the capping, 
Um, some of them are still hanging out, as you can see, but we're clipping them all back. We're up here pretty much for the rest of the day. So those are in, and then pretty much the same thing in here. James is cutting out the lights in here, measuring it out. Where they're marked out on the plan isn't where they can go in reality because we've got joists and stuff, which it just, it fouls the joists. So customers just told us to make it how it looks most aesthetically pleasing, which is what James is doing now. So we're all gonna crack on. We'll be back a little later on this afternoon. Now, top tip, if you're, when you're rewiring, what we find is a good thing to do is use steel band like this under the joist. If you're going from the fuse board and you're doing a straight run like this where all the cables come down one area, get some steel band like this and just tie it over and that way it's faster than clipping. You can just run all the cables through one, one, area, one section of steel band. It holds them all in nicely and it just keeps them up out of the way and you haven't got to spend loads of time clipping loads and loads and loads. It takes you a bit of time to do it initially, it's like an hour's work to go through doing it all, but it's much quicker when you come putting the cables in. We're running the data in now for the data ports down there and uh, I'm running red and green in because I asked for two boxes and they only had one, one of each colour, so I was like, all right, it doesn't actually matter, I mean it's just a different colour, but it's the same spec cable. But the point is, you can buy double T and E clips, I don't know if anybody knows that, but they're quite handy when you're doing stuff like this because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Actually, I think this is for two one mils, I think it is side by side, but it's quite handy. Uh, they're quite good little clips actually. Just keep a box on your van, especially if you're doing stuff like this, if you're clipping multiple cables. All we're doing is just, I'm, I'm keeping these at the top just to try and space them away from T&E. I actually can't remember what the distance is it's supposed to be, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but we haven't got a lot of a lot of choice here, you just space it as far as you can away. I think it's all right, as long as you don't run it through the same holes, that's when you start getting interference and feedback and that sort of stuff. When you see like a whole bunch of T&E and &E, and then you see someone's just dragged a data cable in and, and zip tied it in the middle of all of those, that's when you start getting issues. But I think like this, it's all right. So we'll run these in and we're basically gonna do this, the same everywhere. So we're gonna have, we're actually gonna be using the green one and the yellow one is just gonna be a spare one. We'll terminate it, but essentially I think it's just gonna be a spare one. So we're gonna go around and do that at every single one now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done for today. I've gotta to get back to the unit because I've gotta go down to uh, do my fixed radio, which is Thursdays down here, seven, uh, seven to eight. Okay, now it's Thursdays, one till two, and get my wires crossed. So data is going in now. We're gonna use the um, modular fittings where you just click in the RJ45 jacks. This would be a lot more interesting on the second fix because you'll start, it'll all come together and you'll see why we're doing things in a certain way. Uh, I'm just running the data in that room now, um, but Jay and James, I believe, I haven't even seen them today. They're up here. Quick, James, busy. Yeah, look busy, quick. I can, boss is here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, awesome, fair enough. Yeah, these weren't on the plan, actually in the correct place, because again, what's on plans doesn't always work in reality. And we measured it out and they hit the joists. So we've just, the customer's all right with it, we've just explained, look, we can't do it the way the plan says, so this is the next best thing. But it's come out all right, actually. I'm quite pleased with that. Cables are all up above, so we'll just pop them through, and happy days. But look, I'm gonna shoot off, because I've gotta go and record fixed radio down in Southwark. So I will love you and leave you, and we will catch up in the morning. Day two. Oh, we've got the keys. Have I got the keys? I got the keys. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Keep it sure? Are you sure? You positive? Positive. I'm always positive. positive. Dan. We're always positive, James. Always positive. Just the positivity. Okay, where's the where's the old uh Do you want to give a little speech for us? Yeah. Alright. Alright, another day guys. Um, positive Tuesday. Positive Tuesday. Ooh. Any negative comments has to be matched with a positive comment. Ooh. So if you hit the curb, <laughs> you hit it for a good reason. <laughs> and so full of shit. You, uh, I can't really find a good reason for it in a curb to be honest. What did you do the curb? You wanted a new tire, that's why. <laughs> a shark bite. Positive, do you know why? He wanted to go back to Sarah and go, I want to get some nice 22 inch rims for the Kangoo. We're going to sort it out. We're lower it. You have officially pissed off the boss. Uh, he will be angry and measures will be taken. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. What a day. What a day. What a day. <laughs> a few inches later. If I just start rolling back. Why is he going to reverse the lights on? Yeah. What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> James has just had a panic attack. <laughs> You're gonna hit his van. Yeah. His my van. <laughs> Stay positive, Tomo. Stay positive. I was wondering how long it would be before he talks about positive comments. 
Positivity in the workplace. I burst a tire on the North Circular the other day. I hit a curb. I'll leave a picture of it here. I hit it at a fair speed, to be honest. Cool. Everybody, welcome back. It's the next day. Now, today we are actually using this wall chaser. We're actually going to be using it on a floor in a living room. You'll see in a minute. I'll see if I can set up a time lapse in there. So, we've got uh, some data cables which need to be run in under a floor. And the customer heard that I had this tool. So, it's a perfect tool for this job. So, let's set the camera up in there and you'll see what we're on about. Like you can just see how clean that was. Can you imagine doing that with an angle grinder and a hoover behind it and an SDS like the old days? You know, it's you can't compare it. It's just it is expensive and it's expensive gear to, to, to buy, but it's just quick and clean, and you're in and out of the customer's house done. You know, it's really it does give you an edge, there's no doubt about it. It's super fast, efficient, and it does look very professional. You just you come in, you've got all the gear, click, click, click boom, done, in your van, gone. I mean, it's really, that's what, you know, that's what you charge for, that quick, clean, efficient service. But it is smart, it's... <laughs> Right, we are back at, I don't know why I do this, every video I do this. Right, we're back at this house rewire. We are continuing on and it is, uh, it's a long job. It's, we allowed, like I said earlier in the week, I allowed all last week. So what was that, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we were all here then. We were all here yesterday. So that was Monday because Friday we were elsewhere. So that's five whole days here, for three of us. Uh, we're back here today. So that's six days with three of us. Uh, I was away a little bit this morning, but we've still got it's a fair way to go. And we're not, I mean, all right, I'm stopping for like five minutes to do this. But when, you know, off cam, we're cracking on. We're not hanging about. I mean, all of us, we're, we're motoring on. But there's like, there's just so much to do. And it just, this is like where I come back with things like pricing and stuff. Uh, so to give you a gauge, I mean, we quoted for this. Uh, this was, it's about 12,000 plus VAT for this, which I don't think is excessive i don't think that's why well, it's not it's that it's, it is what it is you can't change it but there is so much to be done like we haven't even started in this room yet i've got sockets and now i've still got a sink in can here i've just finished cutting in this chase here just cutting that chase there so this can all now go in capping uh so we can just neatly put these in we've we've uh, fixed the boxes in now but just like getting all these cables neatly in a capping trying to neatly fix it all in you know, it does take, it takes time. And we haven't even done that. We haven't started the data runs up here yet. So all of these here, we've got to run a pair of our, we've got to run a pair of RJ45s. We've got to run a pair of data, Kesma Cat 6 data uh, there and behind you. Down lights in here, they've all been cut out, but you know, there's still data down there. It's got to be, well, I've got to, just seen another chase. I've got to cut out. There's a lot of work, you know, and it's, uh, when you hear people like, oh, that's five grand max. It's not. There's just you can't. It can't be done. There's literally no way. You just couldn't. You couldn't do it. There's no way. But I know, like though, you, 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 that's the same with anything. All contracting, you'll always get people who say, "Ah, oh, that's a rip off. You can always do it cheaper." There's just no way. I mean, this is you know. Well, it was eleven thousand. Then we had to put the burglar alarm wiring in and one or two other bits. About twelve, twelve and a half, somewhere around there, roughly. But. You can't get around it. It's just, it costs, you know, and it's so much work that's, uh, this actually, this has taken longer than I thought with the, the, and that's three of us. Well, actually the camera guy's been helping out during, during work and it does take time. There's no way of getting around it. So yeah, that goes back to the video, which I'll leave a link on the screen for now. I'll try to, try to remember this time, leave a link on the screen for a previous video. I was talking about pricing and stuff, uh, because I think it's absolutely true. And this is a classic example of it. Oh, because you want me to film, right? Okay, yes, everybody, right. Uh, this is hopefully the last day of our rewire here doing the first fix. 
now lights have all gone in i'm trying to trying to keep it as varied as i can for you but it's quite difficult on the rewire because basically the same in every single room so here as you can see we've sunk in these sockets and stuff and in this room here um we've sunk in the sockets as well so there's not really a huge amount to see um there's a bit of tidying up and stuff like we've got this three cords of strappers from downstairs We've got those which I've got to neaten in here because the customer wants to switch here in the hallway. This is the only place realistically we can fit the switch. So that's got to be done today. Not really a huge amount to see. I mean, things like we've changed little odds and ends like in the boiler room here. I've run in a, a couple of data cables. Client didn't actually ask me to do that from memory. So I've just run a couple of data in for the boiler just because if they've got like a smart boiler, Wi-Fi boiler, it wouldn't surprise me that that might happen. So handy just to have them going down to the cupboard downstairs where the router is. So I'll put those in just in case. Bathroom is the only thing we haven't really touched yet. Uh, I wanna try and do that today because I wanna get out of this place today because um, it's starting to, give me, starting to give me depression being here now. So vanity mirror, that's gotta go in. You can watch me doing that a little later actually. And then the fan, there's a great big stonking hole there. So I've got a chisel down and I'm guessing he's gonna have maybe a six inch fan. We might as well use, utilize that big hole that we've got there. Downstairs, we'll go and have a look. Uh, uh, full, of, full of enthusiasm. James is just there in his Christmas attire. What's that? Oh, it's just your Christmas attire. Well, the hat. Yeah. Getting the Christmas spirit, isn't it? Well, no one bought me one. I, t I rocked up to site and they were all wearing Christmas stuff. They're donning Christmas wear. So yeah, down here, much and muchness. It's almost finished. It's literally, it's just little odds and ends. Data, power again. It might be a bit more interesting. We're gonna slap a few time lapses together now to try and uh, make a first fix a little bit more interesting. When you're marking cables, I like to do it the old fashioned way and I do it with a bit of tape like this. It's a bit old fashioned, but it works really well. So these here are the PIRs for the living room, the kitchen, dining room. So in fact, which one's this? Dining room. So you just mark it up like that, fold it back over itself and just tape it like that. Because we're not actually fitting the alarm system here, they're getting another company in to do it, and it just saves the next. I'm just, it's just saving the next company time. Or even if we were doing it, you'd still do it. But boom, PIR dining room, PIR living room, just super clear. It's a bit, you know, flappy in it. But I mean, if it's just going in the cupboard, we can get to it on second fix. If you don't do that step, you will burn hours later on. You know, for the sake of literally 30 seconds now with a bit of tape, it will save you hours later because then you'll have to go around, bell all these cables out and stuff, and it's just it's just headache you don't need. So yeah, just use a bit of tape and just have them like that. That's the way I normally do it. I've only gone and done it, lads. It's four o'clock. It's dark. We finished the first fix. There's not a lot of point me showing you around the house because you you basically already seen it. But we're done, we're finished. Next clip you see is gonna be us back at the unit under, I don't know if we'll see you back at, we're too, I'm too tired, I can't focus. Day three. All right, next day. Now we are doing a little strip out actually in uh, what was, it was a calf actually. So we're just, uh, there's not a huge amount to see actually because we just, we've literally just finished it. But uh, all of the old uh, switch gear and everything, that's all come out now. So it's uh, quite a neat job now. They're getting it ready for the next tenant. So that's all been taken out. Yeah, all the light fittings, it's all, everything has just been stripped ready for the next tenant. So they're, I actually don't know when they're moving in, but all our job is to do is literally just rip everything out and just completely gut it. So that when the next tenant comes in, they have to wire it from scratch. So not a huge amount to see, but I uh, thought I'd share it with you anyway. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna head back to the unit now. So I will see you back there in a second. You did tie those 12 treads down, Jay, didn't you? Just check in. I did at the front. What about the rear? Can't see from my house, don't worry about that. That's a d motto, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well done, lads, today. Smashed it, knocked out the park. It did for six, home run. What more do we want from a team? 
Hashtag team up. Yeah, you're just happy because you're going home early. <laughs> on a, you're on a promise as well. <laughs> yeah. He's got that makeup set coming up. Actually, if you're coming back, you can come back and do the HEA paperwork with me. You just hit really. Julie, Julie. About that. It's it's just, traffic, there's right. really heavy traffic. There is. Yeah. <laughs> We all started at six and our ETA is three o'clock. So technically, yeah. no, we will be finished. Yeah, hang on a minute. We were on the road at six. Left a bird in here. <laughs> it was a gift. A bird? It was a gift. A bird? <laughs> yeah, just a bird in the office. What? <laughs> yeah, she went on the walkie talkie earlier. I have some paperwork again. Do you want to take that van and get the tyres done this afternoon if you're coming back? No, Sarah, I don't. I'd rather stick pins in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you're a funny f***er, yeah. No response. <laughs> I know you can hear me. <laughs> it's really heavy traffic. Look, there's uh, there's an accident. See, hit the fire trucks here and everything. It's really bad. Really bad. <laughs> Asking for a friend, how do you change channel? <laughs> How's your day anyway, Sarah? Positivity as well? Always positive. Apart from I had to chase the bird out of here, which was quite stressful. I'm sure the bird found it much more stressful. <laughs> right, so we are back at the unit now. Uh, this sign looks like uh, this is the new uh, coffee area. Uh, it's coming together slowly, it's the idea, you know. Um, I know it looks like there was something else there, but I can assure you that was actually custom, that was custom made, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, it looks like it's come from another coffee shop because they didn't want it. That is actually what happened. Um, espresso we sold out uh, and cappuccino also sold out. We've got loads of latte though. Um, so that's another job done. Uh, I apparently, we, on Thursdays we have a thing where we, uh, we all get together and do something on a Thursday. And we normally do scoot tonight here. But last week, uh, we're, sorry, week before last we did karting, which actually is good fun. Expensive, but good fun. Uh, but apparently this Thursday coming we're doing uh, eight aside football. So uh, yeah. <laughs> We'll see how we'll see how that goes down. I have never played football in my life, so I might just wear my DMs, you know. Might just wear my Steelies, you know. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> we'll, we'll, see. we'll see. So I will. Uh, I might try and wear a GoPro, see if I can catch it. I think I run like Phoebe Buffet, you know. So we'll see. But anyway, uh, there's a few bits I want to discuss now, so I'm going to head over to the back of the warehouse, and I'll see you over there. Right now. Um... There is a guy on YouTube called Wrangler Star who I've watched his content for uh, quite a long time now. Uh, in fact, I, he, I was watching him when I started my channel. And the guy has, I, I really respect the fellow, great, uh, you know, great guy for various reasons. And one of the things that I liked about him was that he had this, and he, ha he has, he has this amazing ability to put a sentence together. He can talk about a, a very subjective topic, so not, not even something which has got a definitive answer, like two plus two equals four. You can't argue with that, it is what it is. He can talk about something really subjective, very opinionated, but he can do it in this way that he can form, he can form a sentence and he can do that for, he can do a piece to camera like this, and he can do that for about 20 minutes, half an hour, some of his videos, where he just does a straight piece to cam like this. And he doesn't do a single jump cut, not one. He does it literally off the cuff like this. And I find that really impressive because that's actually, uh, he actually did a video saying, um, talking about people who do jump, jump cuts like me because I find it really uh, we have a lot of jumps in our video and a, a jump cut for anybody who's wondering is where you have a piece of content and you cut out a piece in the middle and you, these two outer pieces you bolt them together that essentially is a jump cut and he can do like a 30 minute piece to camera like this not a single jump cut and I find that really impressive so I'm, I'm going to try I'm going to take a leaf out of his book and I'm going to try 
and do this without a single jump cut. So there may there may be one or two, but I will I will try my best. Uh, I'm actually I, half the time when I'm talking, I know I know what it is I want to say. I just it's getting it from there out here. That is the bit that I know what I want to say. I know, yeah, anyway, that, that this here where well, I would traditionally put a jump cut, but anyway, we'll carry on, we'll keep going. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've been doing a huge amount of thinking and um, a lot of planning, a lot of thinking, a lot of mental, a lot of mental uh, space I've been using up thinking about where I am, where I want to be, what it is I want to do, where I'm going, who I'm going there with, who I'm not going there with, what what is going to happen, you know, all of these all of these different things. And I I remember when I was an apprentice in my first year of uh, my first year of my apprenticeship in college and we had uh, we did site Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and then on Thursday was a college day. And I hated the college days. I hated them with an absolute passion. I, th they were just the day that I loathed because sitting, sitting behind a desk, having to do paperwork and, and learn off a book, I, I just couldn't do it. I can't do it now. I, I just can't. I can do it better now than I could then because I've learned that actually learning stuff out of books is really important. The more you learn, the more you earn. So I sort of learned that that is what needs to be done. So I'm better now than I was then, but I hated it uh, when I was in college and I was 16 back then. And I remember I, we were living in Torquay at the time and my my father used to pick me up from the uh, the Strand in the evenings uh, where the pavilion, the Torquay pavilion is. And I was working, it, it, the, it was in Plymouth. So it was uh, about an hour and a half bus there and an hour and a half bus journey back. So it was like three, three and a half hours a day. It was quite intensive. And I got back into his van after this day of college. And I I remember I got in the van and I, uh, I said to him, you know what, shucks, you know, dad, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not made for this. You know, I was just, well, I, you know, I was just green, naive 16 year old who thought he knew better than his father, you know. And I, I never forget it. He did that thing which he does where he, he, he went quiet. It's always bad. <laughs> he went quiet and he, if what seemed like an eternity, I'm sure it was probably only 30 seconds, but he went quiet and he said, uh, if I were you, I'd keep going. Uh, those were his exact words. So if I were you, I'd keep going. And yeah, 20, God, that was when I was 16. So that's what, 20, 19 years later, here I am now. So yeah, I guess uh, despite my best efforts, some of his advice sunk in. And I watched, uh, I always watched my parents from afar, you know, I always watched them. And one thing that, uh, and I get on famously, <coughs> excuse me, I get on famously with my parents. Probably I'm closer with my dad than I am my mum, but I don't, there's no malice or anything there. It's just, you know, I'm a son, father, you know, my, my sister is closer with my mum, which, you know, fathers and sons, mums and daughters, it's just that's, you know, I don't read anything into that, it's just how it is. I get on very well with my mum, but I'm just, I have a closer bond with my dad, you know, if I had to really talk about something, I'd probably, I could talk to both, but I would probably talk to my dad more. And um, I, I watched, certainly in the last sort of, I would say, certainly in the last seven or eight years, I really, I paid quite close attention to, to my parents. And I would say that they are probably, for where they are in life, they're probably not, not as far as they want to be, if that makes any sense. And I'm not knocking them or bashing them for a second, just to make that clear. This is actually a life experience. This is a process of learning, which is what I'm trying to trying to get across. I, I think for where they are, they're not as far as they would have liked to have been. And I've watched from a distance. And my my father was a person, or is a person, I should say, who, in his younger years, you know, even right up to probably when he was. 55 was very very hot-headed a very hot-headed guy 
uh, you know, if, if he didn't like, if he was working on a construction site somewhere and he didn't like the foreman or he didn't like his boss, he would have no qualms in just telling him what to do and pick up his tool bag and walk away. And he's always done that. That has always, you know, he's, he carries no, he, you know, he, he carries no prisoners. So I've watched that for, for many years, that process of, of constantly moving from job to job. I've always, wit I've, I've witnessed that for a lot of my life. And it's, it, that's probably had a massive effect on me. That's had a real impact on me, especially now, because you watch your, you know, you watch your father do this, you know, go from job to job, to job, to job, to job, to job. And you just, you keep watching that process. And I think that contributes to certain events now. Um, the point is, is that having watched that, I think that it, it's, it's a lot of the reason why I'm here now, because I, one of my biggest fears is not having, not having enough money, uh, not having, not that I want to be rich or famous or wealthy, keep all of it, I don't want any of that. I just want financial security. So I started doing this because I realized that if I want, you know, me and my, me and my partner Penny, we often talk about where we're going to be, where we're going to end up, what we're going to do. And we need, everything costs money. There is just no way of getting around that. Everything you do, it just, it's, it's, it's expensive, everything. You know, any house that you buy, any car that you buy, everything, it costs, it's just thousands upon thousands. It, it never ends. So you've got to have, you've got to have a lot of cash nowadays. I mean, I feel, I feel sorry for the young ones, you know, growing up now. It's, it's hard, you know, and it, it, that is something that keeps me awake sometimes at night, you know, worrying about money, worrying about cash, worrying about you know, being old and not having security, that does worry me a lot. It's something that uh, is a real driving force behind all of this, because I just don't want that. I don't want to be, I don't want to be 60 and have, you know, I don't want to be six, I don't want to get to 60 years old and have, and all I've got to show for a life's work is, uh, you know, a two up, two down semi in a five-year-old car. I, I would rather put a bullet through my head, is the honest, honestly, that, I just would. That that's not my. That is certainly not my vision of where I want to see myself in you know, twenty five, thirty years time from now. So, yeah, that that it's very. There's a lot of other stuff, but I can't go into. But I think that is from watching my father. That was where this came from. That don't change, don't, don't move, don't, uh, yeah, I, I watched him all his life, you know, like a minnow in a pond, you know, I watched that process and it's much easier if you're a shark rather than a minnow, you know, it just, you sort of glide through, you know, rather than a minnow doing this, you know, you just, you, you, you do this and you never end up anywhere. I, I know the reasons behind it. There's a lot of other stuff I've not spoken about, and I won't. That's that's uh, you know that's personal stuff. But um, yeah, the, uh, that sort of approach is much better. And anyway, I that was where this came from. That I decided that if I was going to, if I wanted to try and have some sort of financial security, I wanted to have something which, you know, which me and Penny can. Can, can have that actually has some substance and meaning if so, yeah, where we can get some money in the bank and actually have something which we've achieved then this was going to be it because I can go I can go through my whole life with, with a van you know you saw in the earlier content if you go back 12 months even you know tw 12 months yeah literally if you go back 12 months you'll see the videos where I was just on my own in a van and yeah, you know, I had two vans and it was me and Naomi and we were just bombing around doing what we had to do. 
But where does that get you? Where, you know, with, in the world that we live in, with the amount of money that you need to have, where's that? I, where, I can't understand where that's ever going to get me. I'm, I'm, you're never going to have enough cash to do what you need to do. And I'm not talking about having a, you know, a yacht and a champagne lifestyle. We're just having a, having a home. So I made a decision when I got this place that I had a pot of money. I had some savings. And... I had to make a decision because at the time when I was 12 months ago, when I was running around in these vans, I had a pot of savings and uh, I repeated that. That's where you put a jump cut, incidentally. Uh, I had to make a decision. Do I stay doing that? Do I stay with two vans and I just I can just keep plodding on on my own? Or do I try and break, you know, try and break through that barrier and just try and get, try and do something, be more, be someone better, bigger, achieve something, you know, do I, do I stay with the security of that or do I go into the unknown and do this? And to do this, I have to use my savings, which was actually my mortgage money, you know, so we haven't, I haven't used all of my savings up, but I've used a good percentage of it in order to get this off the ground. So, I had to make that decision and in the end I rolled the dice and I chose this. Because I believe in wanting more. I, I you know, why should we why should we limit ourselves to just why can't we have better? Why can't we be better? Why can't we push harder, be more, want more, do more? Why can't we why do we have to be so I don't even know if that makes any sense, but that's how I see it. So I wanted to I wanted to do something which doesn't just benefit me, it benefits others. In my younger years, I actually wanted to be a police officer. I've never said that before, but that was actually something I wanted to do uh, because I want to help people. That was something I, I really want to do. I wanted to, and I still do now. It's one of the reasons it's, uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but I wanted to be a police officer. I wanted to help people. I wanted to do something which wasn't just about me. It was something about giving something to help others, do it, doing something of benefit. I don't think I could do that job now because I think it's very political. I think it's very, you know, God forbid you say the wrong thing and you, you offend 0.1% of the, the population and you lose your job, you know? So I, did, I, I don't think I could do that now. So yes, I, I spent my mortgage money. We, I plowed it into this uh, and it causes that causes a lot of stress. There is a lot of pressure behind that decision. I didn't want an investor. I didn't want, I, there was a period where I was con seriously considering it and I had, I had two offers presented to me. So people who come to you and they can say, look, we'll invest, you know, a uh, hundred, hundred grand into your business. And, you know, for that, I want a, you know, a percentage or I want a share or whatever. In the end, I, I turned those options down because it just wasn't me. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't be accountable to someone else. I, that would not have worked. So I, I used my mortgage, sa my savings, uh, which was a more, it was a riskier maneuver, but um, it was something I had to do. So, yeah. And that was the other thing. People who say, don't worry. Um, and I'm saying these things because there's a lot of people in, not a lot of people in comments, but I, I do, I do go through the comments and people do, people do talk. And sometimes it's nice to do something like this and just set the record straight a little bit. You know, it's things aren't as clear cut as, as content would sometimes make out to be because it is, it doesn't matter how much I try to make this real. It, there's, it always, it's never totally real because of the way the content it just it doesn't work like that because you don't see the whole day of every single day so it's never going to be a true representation but it's as accurate as i can make it with the the, the time and what i've got but yeah when people say don't worry that's that's something that that grinds my gears seriously um you know uh, i i think if i i've probably plowed into this business i would say a hundred and fifty thousand in the last eight months of my money, roughly. I actually don't know a hundred percent. 
I would say about that, which is about average. I think it's actually less if you go on to the, not the FSB, not the Institute for Small Businesses, if you, the other one, I can't, the name is lost on me now, but the average round of first funding is normally between 220 to 250,000 roughly. So I've done it on the cheap here, uh, sort of cheap to have, but I was doing it with my own savings. So that's what you get, but I've got it off the ground reasonably well considering, but yeah, that's something that never, I didn't realize would ever bother me, but it, that grinds my gears a lot when people say, don't worry, you know, uh, yeah, don't worry, Tom, just keep going. You'll be fine. And I'm like, sod off, you know, <laughs> if that was your cash, you wouldn't be saying that, you know, but it's not your cash you're playing Monopoly with. It's mine. And that keeps you awake at night. There's no way of getting around that. You'll notice the amount of gray hair I've got. It's not that I regret it because I don't, I, I, I would, uh, there's things I would change if I had to do this again, but I don't regret it. I'm glad I've done what I've done. Um, you know, if it all goes pear shaped, I can say, you know what? I gave that a good go. I gave that my best shot. And that's all that in my, in my head, that's what matters that you, you had the balls to go out and do something and actually give it a go while all the naysayers sit on the sidelines all mocking you, you know, there's a, I was prepared to put my money where my mouth was, spend my own cash and just, you know, throw caution to the wind and do it. And I'm glad I did. I don't regret that for a second because I wanted to build something that helps people. I wanted to, the same reason why we've got the, even silly little things like that coffee, sh that coffee sign, you know, it just creates a bit of a vibe in the unit and having the gym room upstairs slowly start coming together, you know, and you're trying to create something, which goes back to what I was saying about being a police officer in my younger years where I wanted to do something that helps people. And that's what I want here. I want to do something which helps people, where people can, where people can turn up and you're not just turning up to some, you know, you're not turning up to some dead end job with a, you know, a boss who, you know, you're just a step on the boss man's ladder, you know, as Dolly Parton said, you're doing something more than that. You know, you're, you're trying to help people and do something that's more than just a job. Yeah, that was always what I wanted. And it is slowly coming together here. And trust, that was the other thing. Um, a couple of you ask, and it does keep coming up time and time again. I keep seeing it in comments about this whole thing of, um, you know, why do you don't collaborate with others and stuff? I don't because uh, I just choose not to. I've learned that through YouTube, YouTube is a very strange place. It's a very, very strange place. It has, it brings out the worst in people. If I'm to be completely honest with you, it brings out, it brings out a lot of bad in people. Um, I have seen, I, from first-hand experience, I know people use you terribly to get where they want to be. You know, they use you as a stepping stone to enable them to get further. And as a result of that, I'm just very untrusting. I don't trust, uh, I, could, I could count everybody that I sincerely trust, I could count that, I could count that on one hand quite comfortably without any, possibly two, but more than likely one. And that's just a result of social media, you know, uh, people who are nice to your face, chocolate to your face, uh, as soon as you turn your back, they just, you know, stab you. And I see that on social media. I see that a lot online. People are lovely to, uh, you know, they're lovely to your face. And then two minutes later, literally the next day, they're stabbing you on the back online. And I'm like, what are you doing? What, you know, uh, but then they turn around and then they're nice to your face. I, I just don't get it, which is why I make a, it's why I don't talk about other creators on here. And it's why I also don't collaborate with other creators because I just don't want to. I, I just, you know, good luck to everybody. They do their thing and I do my thing, but I just want to keep it at bay. Um, there are one or two that I make exceptions for. Paul, actually, Paul Meenan, he's one of them. A fucking gentleman, that man is absolute gentleman. I couldn't care less what anyone says about him. The guy's a, he is a, that man is a gentleman. You know, he's, uh, he'll help people and not want a damn thing in return. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Just help people and not want something in return, just help. Either someone's breaking into the unit or, or that's the bin lorry. I've got a feeling that's the bin lorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That was, I just wanted to try and get those points to the camera. I think just try and uh, 
make it as uh, fluid as I can. It's not as good as Wrangler stars, but uh, there's a lot going on and there's a, a huge amount of stress. But it is getting easier actually. This is the first month now. This is the first month where we've actually turned a profit since we moved into the unit. As you know, when you invest heavily into a business, you're, you know, you invest as loads and loads of cash and every time you're, you make money, you buy more equipment with it. So you, although you make a profit, you absorb it straight back into your business. This was the first month, this month, where we actually, we paid all our bills, all our expenses and everything, and we actually turned a profit. So considering we've done that in eight, seven months, I think it's pretty good going, you know? So starting to make a profit again now, I'm starting to have some free, a bit of, bit of cash coming in. It's very nice to have, God, how nice that peace of mind to have a bit of, a bit of cash, just a little bit of, yeah, I've got much, <laughs> but there's a, there's a little bit and it's nice. Um, yeah, so that was all I wanted to say really. Um, so we're gonna leave the video here. Thank you very much for watching and uh, leave your comments, feedback, thoughts, anything, just put it all below and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Sorry, sorry, I have to, I have to. Keisha, Becky. <laughs> Yo fam, what you Slap it, whack it, app it. Clap it. <laughs> I do this grime shit, drill shit. Yeah. On a regular thing. On a regular. Man, say no. Batty, watty, slap it. The name is Keisha, Becky, whack it. Yo fam. Tucker, tucker. Your bars are sick, you know. Betty, crock ya. Did I shit your pants? <laughs> It was a, it was a brown trouser, mate. Uh, <laughs> I must say. Go, <Yeah>, mate. <laughs> 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 <laughs>